Hey guys, this is Bharadwaj with Phone Arena and you're watching the review of the Zolo Q700. The Q700 is Zolo's latest mid-range offering in the Q-Core series powered by a quad-core processor. The phone is curved on the sides and has a decent build quality for the price. It has a 4.5 inch QHD display at a resolution of 960 by 540 pixels and the IPS display is based on one glass solution technology that reduces the phone's thickness by reducing the air gap between the touch sensor, the display and the cover glass. The display is bright and has great viewing angles and since it is glossy, it is a fingerprint magnet. There are the usual capacitive touch buttons for menu, home and back below the display that offer haptic feedback when pressed. There is a tiny microphone hole below that. There is an earpiece on top along with a 0.3 megapixel VGA front facing camera and there are the usual proximity and ambient light sensors next to the camera. In addition to all that, there is also a LED notification light. The phone has shiny plastic running on the sides with the volume rocker that is present on the left side of the phone while the power button is present on the right side of the phone. The micro USB slot and the 3.5mm audio jack are located on the top. The back has matte finish similar to the Zolo A700 and it is very easy to remove dust just by wiping and it is of very high quality by the way. There is a 5 megapixel camera with LED flash and a secondary microphone on the back. The camera takes decent shots but the image quality is not that impressive. The camera is quite different from the stock UI and there is a navigation bar on the left pane that lets you change the different camera modes just by swiping around. Even though the phone runs on Android 4.2, it doesn't have Photosphere, but it does have other features like multi-angle for example. The phone can record videos at 720p HD resolution and since the phone has a secondary microphone, the audio is crisp and stereo. The electronic image stabilization uses software enhancements to minimize blurring and device shake, which is quite good. Coming to the software part, the phone runs on Android 4.2.1 Jelly Bean, so you get a lot of features that are not available on 4.1 including lock screen widgets, notification toggles and lots more. In fact, you have more toggles than stock. You have Google now, but you can't access it from the lock screen by swiping up or holding the home button. In addition to the usual lock screen options, there is voice unlock that lets you record a command and say it to unlock the device. Out of 4GB of internal storage, you get around 2.7GB of user available memory and out of 1GB of RAM, you get 977MB of usable RAM. In both cases, it is quite adequate and even though there is an option to switch the default storage to SD card, it doesn't install the apps or games in the external storage which we found quite to be an hindrance while installing huge games. There are several tabs in the menu as main apps, games and widgets, you can select groups option for apps and games tab. This groups them into folders automatically so that you can access them easily. The phone comes with quite a few pre-installed apps. There are the usual utility apps and google apps. But apart from these, Zolo also offers their own apps, calling it Zolo Unlimited. The Zolo Switch app lets users create multiple profiles and switch between them easily just like Android 4.2 on the tablet. There is also a kids mode that lets your kids select the app that you choose and there is also the kids tube app that offers kids content from YouTube. The Zolo Secure app keeps the phone protected by locking and also lets you track it remotely. This is like the tracking services most other companies offer. The Zolo Power optimizes battery usage and lets you set data sync frequency, night mode and low battery mode to conserve battery life. The SIM management option is a common feature in the dual SIM phones that lets you configure both the SIM cards. The keyboard is stock but it doesn't come with the gesture typing like the stock Android 4.2. You can share content from the phone to HDTV by connecting a wireless display adapter to a HDMI enabled TV. This option comes by default in all the Android 4.2 phones. The phone is powered by a 1.2 GHz quad-core MediaTek 6589M processor with PowerVR SGX 544 GPU which is clocked at 238 MHz. 
the performance is decent. We tested some games on the device which did not lag, but we could not test high-end games since it could not be installed due to the less internal memory. The 2400 mAh lithium polymer battery lasts a whole day with average use, with few hours of 3G data, few calls, SMS music and video playback and whatnot. Overall, the Zolo Q700 is definitely one of the best mid-range smartphones. It has a good display, it is powered by a quad-core processor and runs on the latest Android 4.2 Jelly Bean OS. One of the main drawbacks though is the lack of options to install apps on the SD card. At a price tag of about Rs 9999, if you're looking for a smartphone with the latest Android update, quad-core processor and a good display but can live with the less internal memory and an average camera, go for it. Listed here are the pros and cons of the device. Do hit the like button if you like this video and do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like these. Thanks for watching.